Good morning, guys. So it's day three. Oh, no, wait. Was it day three or day four? In any case, they had to cancel the glacier, the Tracy Arm Glacier, because it was too foggy and too dangerous. Day four. Is this a rabbit? We just disembarked for Juno and it looks nice and cloudy today. We had to skip Tracy Arm because it was too foggy and not safe to pass by. So unfortunately, we didn't see the glacier this morning. But this is my view right now. On this day, our schedule was set to include a passage through Tracy Arm Fjord, Sawyer Glacier in the early morning, followed by docking at the Juno port in the afternoon. However, due to adverse weather conditions and passenger safety concerns, the ship captain made a decision to skip Tracy Arm and proceeded directly to Juno. This is not uncommon at all as last minute changes to cruise itineraries due to weather are frequent. Juno. A captivating destination boasts breathtaking natural beauty highlighted by the Mendehall Glacier and offers exceptional whale watching opportunities. The Mount Roberts Tramway offers panoramic vistas and the city's culinary scene showcases delicious Alaskan seafood. For a more cultural experience, the Historic District and Alaska State Museum are a must. Outdoor enthusiasts can partake in activities like hiking and kayaking, while the history buff can dwell into the city's gold rush heritage and explore its charming downtown area. Our group split up again, and 11 of us decided to explore the renowned Mendehall Glacier. On our way there, we also passed by a river to witness salmon actively spawning. Then you can see the grayer ones that are just idling. Those ones have already spawned and they're waiting to die. You can see how many birds are out there. Those are all the birds. You can see the more emerald green ones are actively spawning. Where the gray, the gray idle ones, they spawn and they're slowly idling. Those, just by idling like that, they're, they're, they're not taking, they're not swimming. There's not enough water rushing through their gills to keep them alive. And so it's not like a painful process. They just slowly go to sleep, right? But I, I was just telling her that like you can you look out there, you can like blur your eyes a little bit and just look through your periphery. You can actually distinguish the active ones through their body language, the active ones that have like shark-like behavior them in your periphery, then you switch from looking and paying attention to those in your periphery, you can pay attention, you can see all the ones that are idle, you can really distinguish it that way. They're born in this creek, right? Yeah, they come back to where they are. They right back to the same creek, but this is fresh water, right? And so they, they are born in fresh water, they get washed out to the ocean, they go mature for a few years, and then they come, come back, back to the fresh water. The fresh water is actually a trigger for their chemistry as well. The inside uh, of their body, so the once, mind just switches. Once the chemistry is there, then they got to... The mind switches, they start going up the stream, they stop eating, and they just have a one-track mind, you know. But it's, you know, they go back to the ecosystem immediately. Is where when we die, we bury ourselves and sin our... We always want to separate ourselves from what we really are, right? They go instantly back. When those birds eat them, immediately they, their, their, their cell, their energy, it's used and it is a part of life and continues on immediately, right? And then, you know, they take it up into the forest, the forest eats them, that energy is constantly moving from these, these animals, you know? We opted for a more relaxed and immersive experience in contrast to more rush excursions and decided to take a couple of taxis there. Another pro tip, if you're a larger group, you can consider taking a cab there the ride for each way is about $45 and the fee for visitors of age above 15 is $5.
However, cab drivers typically charge $17 per passenger. I'm not sure why, by the way, but that's what we were charged. How much it's shrunk since the last time we were here? Yeah, probably a ton, but you know, in 15 years it's shrunk so much. somehow iceberg right there so cool cute icebergs <laughs> are you vlogging or taking a picture I'm vlogging A bunch of cool rocks. Penny so I have a 1989 rocks. American penny. Nice. Then we found this crystal, and then we have a very flat rock, perfect Ooh. skipping rock.
good game for like um, kids where the idea is like you can like pin the quill on the porcupine. Thank you. Yeah, and you can see the zoomed in porcupine quill. Um, over here. So they have these little barbs that come off the dark mm -hmm. end, and those barbs are what help porcupine quills get stuck if someone gets pricked. souvenir store and now I'm heading to Tracy's King Crab Shack. Let's check it out. Let's Remember my advice to wait until Juno for a crab feast? We definitely indulged this time. I highly recommend the Alaskan king crab here.
fog was way too thick. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's really unlucky. Well, hopefully the glacier tomorrow will be okay. Yeah, hopefully. Hey guys, so we just changed for dinner and I'm just wearing some casual clothing. So this is Emma's t-shirt, the very first ready-to-wear piece that I bought. Kelly belt. These are the nice little crop pants that I got recently. She put sandals. This bad boy, which is awesome. I love the constants to go. It's been really, really handy this whole trip and we're ready for dinner. With a port stay that extends late into the evening, Juno offers ample time for excursions. Despite this, we returned in time for our dinner reservation. I've linked to the rest of my Alaska vlog playlist right here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!